Welcome to the rocket profile of the Falcon 9, the rocket that started the reusability race. The current version of the Falcon 9, version 1.2, has a first stage consisting of 9 Merlin 1D engines, burning kerosene and oxygen, each with a vacuum thrust of 914 kN, and a vacuum specific impulse of 311 seconds. Version 1.0 of the Falcon 9 had the Merlin 1C engine, with only 480 kN, and 304.8 seconds of vacuum ISP, and the engines have been in a continual state of improvement since. To keep costs low, SpaceX started with a simple engine with a fairly low chamber pressure, 982 PSI, and gradually improved it to the current 1410 PSI. All versions of the Falcon 9 have a 3.66 meter diameter, but the tanks increased in length between the versions. The main point of the first stage is of course that it is meant to be reusable, returning to landing at the launch site when the payload is small and landing on a barge with a heavier payload or payloads destined for geostationary transfer orbit. On this launch, the Falcon 9 is being tested with its maximum payload, 22.8 tons, and doesn't have enough reserve fuel to land the first stage. Typical burn time for the first stage is 2 minutes and 42 seconds, but the engines can throttle and will also shut down early if aiming for recovery. The key to the recoverability of the first stage is actually the design of the second stage, which consists of a single Merlin 1D adapted for vacuum operation. The most obvious adaptation is the long nozzle, which allows it to get 348 seconds vacuum ISP, over 10% more than the first stage Merlin 1Ds. It also manages a bit more thrust, 934 kN, and burns for around 6 minutes and 37 seconds depending on throttling. Falcon 9's payload capacity is often compared to an Atlas V or Delta IV, so it's striking that the second stage engine outputs about 8 times more thrust than the second stage of either of those rockets. The difference in fuel and efficiency is a minor factor. The main reason is that the Falcon 9 second stage is responsible for the vast majority of the Delta V to get to orbit and almost all of the horizontal velocity. The first stage mainly serves to boost the second stage above the denser parts of the atmosphere so that the vacuum engine can do its thing. Like the second stage of the Atlas V and the Delta IV, the second stage of the Falcon 9 can restart and will do so to put payloads into geostationary transfer orbit and also to deorbit itself to prevent extra space junk. While the Space Shuttle was an early attempt at reusability, it failed to drive down launch costs or pioneer an era of space innovation. Falcon 9 has already succeeded in doing both, thanks to the fact that it is a cheap, straightforward launcher even without reusability. With that, thank you for watching this rocket profile of the Falcon 9.